Okay, I'm going to do another Darktable screencast. This time I'm going to be doing an overview of the noise reduction features of Darktable. Um, the thing about the Darktable noise reduction features is that there are a lot of different options. They've come in uh, over the development period um, and they often give you a window into the same underlying um, algorithms of Darktable. Darktable has a lot of very uh, powerful algorithms for noise reduction, but the various options in the user interface can be a bit confusing for new users. One thing that I wanted to mention before I uh, go on though is my last video, the raw red of the butterfly, there was a bug affecting the color picker um, when, you'd, when we'd crop the image. I just wanted to say that that was fixed before I could even go and do the bug report. Um, obviously the Darktable developers watch my videos, which is impressive. Here's the uh, Git history, and you can see that uh, Ulrich fixed uh, this bug by midday, the day after I, uh, I had uh, done my video. So here's my video on the 3rd of August, by the next day it was fixed, so thanks Ulrich. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up um, a bunch of images that I took about six months ago on my old camera. Uh, and the reason I'm using these images is because they were shot, un shot under such low light conditions. Um, this roller derby match was shot in a very dark uh, hall and I'm using you know, doing everything I can. I'm using ISO 1600, which is the maximum on my old 350D. And I'm shooting with a fast prime, 50mm 1.8, and I'm using flash. And yet, I struggle to get a shutter speed anywhere near 160th or whatever. So, you know, really, really difficult situation. I had to use a high ISO, so it's probably a, a great um, thing to use to look at the noise. So I've gone through and I've chosen the images that I like the best. Now I was going to use this image. Okay. Now let me just, I've already worked on this one, so let me reset it back to the point where before we've done any anything. Okay. So first things first, we need to enable the various different uh, noise reduction modules. Uh, so we go down here to more modules and let's turn on all the denoise ones. Uh, let's turn on the equalizer and let's turn on raw denoise. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work uh, from the beginning to the end. Um, denoise profiled is uh, was designed to be the most usable option. It's kind of meant to be a single click uh, denoiser. You can see the details about the uh, this plugin and the reasons why it was created and how it works by looking at this profiling sensor and photon noise blog post. Um, the URL is here if you're interested. Um, it goes through exactly what the theory is behind the way that it uh, that it takes the, the um, information about the given sensor, it profiles it, and it tries to um, reduce two different types of noise within that image um, to give the highest signal to noise ratio, which basically means the highest amount of detail without the noise, or the highest amount of signal uh, compared to the noise, if you, if you see what I'm saying. So if you cancel the noise, the signal relative to the noise is, is larger than if you don't cancel the noise. The other place to look, obviously, for information about these things is the correction group um, area of the uh, manual. It goes through how to use each of the each of the uh, modules. I'm just going to give you um, an overview of how I use them. So, uh, if you want more detail, come here, or again, look at the uh, the screencast tutorials that Pascal de Brin's done. He's even got one specifically on denoising, um, which again goes into probably more depth than I I do in each of these modules. One thing to mention though is that he's only working with Darktable 0.9, so I've got a lot more tools at my disposal than he did back at that time. 
Uh, the other place that I've been looking for information has been the archive of the Darktable users mailing list. Um, if you want to get to the archive of the mailing list, you can you can do that by just going to darktable.org, contact, and the mailing lists are listed here. So you go to the users mailing list and then the archives, and here is the archive of the mailing list. Now, obviously, you can. Um, uh, you can subscribe to this mailing list and that'll allow you to ask questions um, and so forth by email and you can do that from that same page here where you put in your email address and so forth and subscribe. Now let's go back to my summary. So uh, here is the Denoise profiled stuff that I want to talk about. Now that this is uh, a strategy that I found on the mailing list. Um, there's also a strategy that's listed in the uh, manual. I'll probably use the one that's in the manual actually and uh, use the other one, leave the other one for for you to try out. So let's go and go straight to it. Okay. So here's the Denoise Profile module. Now as I said before it uses the information um, that it knows about the particular sensor and, mo and camera model that you're using uh, so, and it's meant to be uh, the best signal to noise, so the best amount of detail without the noise as possible. So it's kind of supposed to be a single click um, in order to reduce the noise. And you can see already I've seen, you know, done a single click and the noise is really, really significantly reduced. You can see that it's found my camera model and ISO on here on the right. Um, so I'll just leave that as it is in the, in the default. So one thing though is that this is not yet. so there are two uh, techniques that this module can use by default it will use the non-local means which seems to give a, a good overall result but it might um, mean that you lose a bit more detail than you would like so the suggested method is to use a non-local means instance combined with a lightness blend and a wavelet instance combined with a color. Now you can also see that this is the strategy that um, this person has used, but they've gone in and added another step in the middle here with the wavelet on the lightness. Um, so let's, it, it's important to mention at this point that the order is significant um, that you work. So uh, I found that the best uh, results come from using the wavelet domain first. So we cancel the color noise first. Now you can see that here. Uh, the only thing that's changing in this image is the color. Look at this red spot here. When I turn this on, the red spot disappears. The blue blotches disappear. So the color overall looks a little grayer. Um, so essentially we're working, these red spots here get lessened, but I mean these are really hot pixels. So we're working on the color domain first. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that um, in a more strong fashion than we're going to do the luma noise because the chroma noise is less obvious um, to the human eye than the luma noise is. So we lose, as far as the human eye perceives, if you lose detail in the color, it's less obvious than if you lose detail in the luma. So you need to be a little bit more careful in cancelling that noise in the luma um, or in the, the, the lightness than in the color. So we've got our um, instance here which is cancelling the uh, noise in the color. I'm going to leave that at 100% opacity and a strength of 1. Obviously you can play with this strength um, as you see fit, but this is this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to create a new instance and this one is going to be non-local means and the blend mode is going to be lightness. Again, this is coming from the documentation here. So non-local means on lightness. Okay, so you can see that we've cancelled quite a bit of noise here. Um, as I was saying before, it might be worth backing off either the strength or the blend um, 
in the non-local means module to make sure you retain as much uh, detail as you would like to see. So each image is different um, and it's just a matter of working out what sort of noise reduction you want to apply for the particular image. The other thing you want to keep in mind at this point is that we're looking at 200% zoom. Remember I pressed control and I zoomed in to get to 200% zoom. Obviously this is you know the harshest possible um, result but let's I mean this is this is the best technique that I've found for doing it with these two different uh, copies of the of the um, profile denoise let's go have a quick look let me take a snapshot of this so this is with our uh, noise applied let's go back before the noise and now let's compare okay so let me just drag this across so you can see the difference now this girl in the background is actually out of focus keep that in mind you can see she's actually got I just realized she's actually got some face paint on there wouldn't have seen that with the noise present okay so let's turn off the snapshot now remember that the snapshot works by taking a, a essentially a screenshot of what you're seeing so you saw before when I when I click the snapshot button it zooms me back into the zoom level where I was and if I zoom now the snapshot doesn't change so um, I might just reset that snapshot off and take a new one at 100% okay sorry Now we have the noise on the left and the non-noise on the right. Now the other thing that's probably worth uh, mentioning at this point is that you can also, um, with a lot of other techniques in the pipeline, you can affect uh, the noise profile of the image, the resulting noise profile of the image. So what I might do is turn off these denoise modules and just do a quick uh, overview of what those other things are. So I'm going to talk about sharpen for a second. So by default if you sharpen your image and it's got a lot of noise in it you'll actually end up accentuating that noise. Um, let me see if I can make this as obvious as possible. But you can see the effect that this is having on the on the wall in the background here. The noise is becoming more and more obvious as I sharpen the image. Let me just turn this off and turn it back on again. You can see the, the accentuation of those speckles in the noise. Now one thing that you can do to counteract that is you can use this threshold. What this threshold basically means is what is the lowest amount of contrast that you want to sharpen? If you only sharpen things in the image above a certain contrast threshold, that is bright pixels next to dark pixels, you won't affect the noise because the brightness values of the noise tend to only fluctuate a little bit from their surrounding pixels. So if you see here now, we've, we're sharpening only the largest blocks of colour. So you can see this halo appearing on the edge of the, the helmet and so forth. Um, or, or, you know, on the edge of her body there is, is sharpening. Now, that's fine if you're zoomed out. You know, you can probably see that it's you know, sharpening these things. Obviously, this is way over sharpening. But if we decrease this threshold all the way down, you'll suddenly see all this noise pop out. So one of the techniques that you can use for uh, reducing the apparent appearance of noise is to just use a threshold where the noise is no longer being sharpened. So as I scroll this up, you'll see this noise progressively disappearing. Well, not disappearing, but progressively becoming less obvious. So as with anything, um, you're going to need to work out which le uh, which amount of sharpening you want for your particular image. And remember as well that sharpness um, is best done at the final resolution that you're going to use the image. So if you're going to output your images uh, for Facebook or whatever, uh, they're going to be scaled down a lot. You'd lose any sharpening that's really subtle at a very high resolution because when you when you downsample your image, um, the sharpness just gets mushed away and, and disappears. 
So just bear those things in mind. I might go through again another video about that specifically, but this is this is important to know about when you're doing no denoising. Now, the other thing that's uh, important is the demosaic algorithm that you use. Um, demosaic is um, the method that uh, any raw processor needs to use in order to take the raw pixel values that come off the sensor and convert them into red, green, blue pixels. Because of the way that the um, uh, the, the Bayer interp interpolation works, you'll see that um, with a regular um, Bayer pattern sensor that you've got twice as many green pixels as you do red and blue pixels. Um, so. Uh, so the first thing that has to happen is the um, right at the beginning of the uh, of the process. You don't even see it here, but before this happens, you get a demosaic step. Now, there's a few features in the demosaicing which you can use to um, reduce the appearance of of noise. You can see that there's this match greens section here. This is discussed in Pascal de Brin's um, screencast, so if you want a little more detail on it, uh, check that out. But what this does is it smooths the greens. It makes them more um, more regular, uh, which, if you think about it, would reduce the appearance of noise because noise is variation that's introduced, um, even though the values uh, of pixels next to each other are pretty similar. The noise causes those uh, those pixels to be peaky. You know, some of them are bright, some of them are darker, just based on on the noise. So if you average these uh, pixels out, you see that they they actually change in appearance. And there's a few different uh, methods for doing that. I think full average gives you a pretty good result, but so does local average. But when you disable it, you see the noise becomes a little finer, but it becomes more variable. This is just something that you might uh, find affects later on in your pipeline, the denoising. If you're really serious about denoising, then you can start looking at those things. Otherwise, I would recommend you know not worrying too much about the demosaic features. So I'm just going to leave that off for now. It's just something that I, I wanted you to be aware of, just for completeness. All right, so I've got my uh, first image here. Now. This is pretty much my um, my denoising strategy that I use day to day because it's the most modern tool. It gives you access to both the D, the wavelet domain and to the the non-local means methods, and I think it gives the best result uh, to my eye anyway. So uh, I've got a friend who uses who also. Um, does raw processing on Linux, and he uses one of Darktable's main proprietary uh, competitors, which is called Aftershock Pro. It used to be called Bibble Pro, and he actually really likes the Noise Ninja um, noise reduction that he gets in uh, Aftershock Pro. So I figured I'd come in here and I'd do a comparison. So here's the same image. I've tried to sort of match the exposure and so forth between them. Uh, even though they used completely different scales over here. So I've just done that by eye. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick look at the Noise Ninja noise reduction. Okay, so I've enabled it now. I think the default's 10. Yep. So I c you can see already that the, that the noise looks quite different. Or the the noise reduction looks quite different. Let's zoom in to a similar sort of position on Darktable. You can already see that the the cheek has been smoothed quite significantly, but the eye retains a lot of its detail, but also a lot of its noise. I see along these edges. Um, I think. I mean, obviously, uh, Noise Ninja is a proprietary algorithm. Uh, you have to pay money for it, and we can't, we don't get to see the source code. But I, it looks to my eye as if what it's doing is applying uh, a mask to selectively blur the uh, parts of the image which are smooth and exclude entirely from the noise reduction process the parts of the area that have detail. So that 
strategy obviously leaves a lot of detail in the around the eyes or you know in the, the high detail parts of the image but what it doesn't do is remove any of the noise the noise is still very apparent here I'm going to jack up the noise reduction now and see what sort of effect it has okay to my eye it looks almost the same 10 versus 20 looks almost the same now this might of course be the image that I'm using this very very noisy image is, is particularly taxing but I'll leave it to you to decide which image you like the best obviously the exposure is still slightly different between the two images but they actually give quite a different result in the noise reduction now if I'm not wrong noise ninja has yeah so we've got an extra slider over here let's see if we reduce the smoothing how that does okay so that brings back the noise in the cheeks and so forth what's the strength strength's almost imperceptible but the smoothing let's jack the smoothing right up to 20 yeah so just that just blurs the image as far as I'm concerned well anyway those that's a quick demo of the noise reduction in Aftershock Pro let's go back to Darktable what I'm going to do at the end of this process is I'm going to produce 100% crops uh, of these images with the various different noise reduction techniques right so let's go on to the next noise reduction technique what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out into the light table I'm going to take this image and I'm going to duplicate it what this does is it creates another settings file for the image it's the same underlying raw file but um, I can have a completely separate set of settings for this next raw file so I'm going to go back to the point before I did any noise reduction in the history stack I'm going to compress it to get rid of all of the stuff that we don't need all right so the next technique in my list is the equalizer now the equalizer works in the wavelet domain which uh, is a fancy way of saying it works with the frequencies in the image so um, if you think of the different sort of levels of detail that you can imagine in, imi in an image um, uh, or if you can think of you know like a, a frequency domain between coarse details you know like this shape here is a coarse detail in the image it's down here in the coarse end and the fine details are like the little dots that we have here or any fine details that are in the image itself they're affected by this area up here all right so if we drag some of these handles around you'll you'll start to see the difference that it makes let's uh, reset this so let's pull up the fine detail for example okay you can see immediately that we've accentuated the fine detail in the image and in this case we've accentuated the noise in the image let's reset let's pull up the course can you see what that's done quite a bizarre effect actually but the biggest objects in the image like this white color of her legs or their helmets have become or the black shirt for example have become accentuated in a way let's turn it off and turn it back on you can see that so the biggest blocks of color have, have been affected by that process let's reset that let's pull up the middle we can see that the medium sized details in the image now got affected like these stripes or these dots or even just the, the texture of the floor let's pull that down and you'll see that the effect you get is a blur instead so we now have the fine details still things like the uh, features of their faces and so forth but we've lost a lot of detail in the middle and if we pull this down on the end you can see it just basically blurs the, the whole thing out so we were working in the Luma channel there but obviously the, the same thing occurs in the color um, you can't see any difference there but there we go the big big details lots of color a little bit of color 
medium details, lots of color, a little bit of color. So you can see, and now we, you know, we've got sharpening, and um, but you can see the effect that the the equalizer has. Obviously, it's quite a complex tool, um, and there's quite a lot to know about it. Um, so I'll probably create, do another video about just the equalizer. But what I'd like you to look at just from a simple point of view is the presets that we have here. They're a great place to start when you don't understand really the, the full detail like I don't about the equalizer. You can see there's a bunch of different um, things that you can apply to the image. Obviously we're interested in these denoise presets. So let's zoom in on our image again to the same place that we've been working with. And let's apply the subtle denoise. You can see it's already had a really good effect on the on the most obvious noise there. You can see here the effect that's been done. You can see these in the, sh in the various different domains. So the luma has been pulled up slightly from the bottom. Uh, the chroma has been pulled up. You can see the chroma has been done essentially twice as strong as the, the, the luma, just like we did in our previous strategy with our two copies of the profile denoise. The chroma has been done strongly and the luma has been done half as strong. Sharpness hasn't been changed at all. So that's the subtle one. Now we go to the medium denoise. You can see that more detail has been lost, but the image is overall smoother. Now the luma has been pulled up quite a lot more strongly and the chroma, well it's pretty much been left alone. And if we go to the strong denoising now, again we lose even more detail. You can see that the sharpness has now been pulled down in the, the highest detail points. So you know, let's say you wanted to get some of that sharpness back, you could fiddle with these, these handles. here. So the chroma has been pulled now up to a much stronger uh, level uh, in the, the higher frequencies and the luma has also been, well, the luma has been pulled from here up to about there. Okay, so I personally wouldn't use the strong uh, method on this one but Let's leave it on, say, just the middle middle technique. Okay, so that's the equalizers, denoise features. Let's go create another copy of our image. Duplicate, go into our new image. Let's get rid of the equalizer and compress the history stack. Okay, so here we are. Our next technique, denoise non-local means. Okay, you can see already the noise has been reduced quite significantly. But there's still quite a bit there. Uh, so let's have a fiddle with the strength. So you can see uh, the luma is being affected 50% as much as the chroma. This is a, a common theme throughout all of the noise redu reduction modules. Uh, so that's a good rule of thumb. Uh, now Pascal de Brin gave a, a good rule of thumb in his video which is use the ISO divided by 10 as the starting point for the luma and do the chroma twice as strong as that. Now obviously I'm using ISO 1600 which means that I can't use 160% on the Luma so uh, why don't I just push this up just a little bit so you can see that's already looking much better. I really quite like that 75% there. Now obviously you can play with the strength as well. Uh, you know that that's made it slightly smoother. I'm starting to lose a lot of detail here. If I pull back you know I'm starting to see the noise creep through again. So what I might do is leave the strength at 50% and leave the luma up here at 75. This patch size, the bigger the patch size, it looks like the, more, the less of an effect. So the smaller patch size has more of a blurring effect. I'm just going to leave that at 2. 
Okay, so that's my second, oh, sorry, my I think my third image, isn't it now? Uh, so let's go back out to the light table, duplicate our image, and move on to our next technique. We have the bilateral filter. Okay, now be aware that uh, the bilateral filter has um, some serious requirements uh, on in the memory stakes. So if you don't have a powerful computer, you might see errors or crashes or whatever when it runs out of memory. Just be aware of that. Okay, let's go uh, turn off our non-local means and compress our history stack to remove it from there. Okay, bilateral. Let's turn this thing on. Don't see much of an effect so far. Now remember as I was saying before that the green channel is the most important one for uh, the luma noise. So let's push this up a little and see what happens. Okay, maybe the red, let's see if we can change the red denoising a little and see if that spot disappears. Yeah it does. And let's pull up the blue. Okay. It's already starting to look smoother. I think I'm going to push the greens up a little more. Yeah. Let's have a look at the radius. It's a little smaller radius result. I think it's, I can only see a change here. Clearly, when we're, we're a massive radius versus a small radius, there is a difference in the image. Feels to me like there's more detail when the radius is larger. So perhaps the the denoising effect. Okay, the spatial extent of the Gaussian. So it's it's applying a blur. Uh, so I would expect a smaller blur to give to leave more detail in the image. Looks like I've sort of reached the limits of uh, of what I'm going to get out of this tool, so I might just back it off a little until I reach the point where I see the best image, basically. Okay, what's the default? 15. I think that's too much in this particular case. Okay, well that's that's the result. Um, I'm not sure I like that as much as the other modules, but it's clearly less noisy. Let's go on to what's our next raw denoise. So raw denoise comes from the DC raw module. It's quite a simple technique, and you'll see it in raw therapy or. Um, the various other Linux um, do, uh, raw processing tools um, that come from DC raw or that depend on DC raw. So let's try this thing. You can see it's quite a simple module. We either have we've we've got a threshold which looks like it applies quite a strong Gaussian blur of some kind. So we really have quite a strong um, dependency of detail loss to the noise reduction. Obviously we could use some kind of uh, blend uh, and reduce the opacity or something like that to get a more subtle effect. Kind of, you know, half cancel the noise if you like. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think I could ever see myself using that because it's uh, not as good as the other approaches that Darktable has. But again, it's up to you. It's really up to you what you prefer the look of. Alright, and we've discussed the matching greens in the highlight reconstruction and we've done our comparison with Noise Ninja. Okay, so I've finished now the overview of all of the different um, noise reduction techniques that I know about. Um, if anybody has any noise reduction techniques that they particularly like or if um, they've used the modules that I've used in a different technique that they think or in a different manner that they think results in better results. 
please let me know, leave a comment below the video or on G Plus or on the um, Darktable users mailing list. I'd love to see any other techniques that people use. Otherwise, I'm just going to go and copy the um, sharpening from the first image that we did so that it's consistent across all of our denoised images. Okay, so we've now I've now sharpened all the images the same, so that that's not going to introduce any difference. Now I'm going to output the images uh, to JPEG and cool. And I'm going to do 100% crops of, of particular points of those images and just put them all next to each other in a single image. And I'll put a link to that image down below the video. So if you want to go and um, compare for yourself, um, do some pixel peeping for yourself, please feel free. Um, otherwise, yeah, let me know if uh, there's any technique that I missed or that would be better. Okay, thanks for listening.